Welcome to the parent webinar for ninth and 10th grade students. Today we're going to be going over some of what um, the counselors have been doing with the students and going over graduation requirements and how to plan for the next couple of years. Respect, integrity, service, and excellence rise. That is what we wish all our students to uh, aspire to. These are the first RISE Award winners ever in our school. It's the um, highest award you can receive at Rock Ridge, and each of these students demonstrated those characteristics. And each quarter we give out RISE Awards. Today we're really going to be talking about um, course selections, graduation requirements, and one of the things that we go over again and again with students is we really need to be able to find a balance. It's never about ability, it's about time in the day. So some of our students may want to take several challenging courses and it's not that they can't do it, it may be that they don't have the time to do that, do soccer, be in the play, um, or be involved in the community and volunteering. So it's finding a balance. Our kids need to be able to know their limits and not feel the pressure that they have to be perfect in everything they do. One of the programs we've talked a lot about with students this year and faculty and at all our meetings is helping students find their, their resilient factors. Um, we talk about sources of strength in advisory. We've talked about it in our presentations. And it's finding those parts of students' lives that can help them be resilient and focus on the positive aspects of their life to help them get through difficult situations. Um, now we're going to talk about helpful tips for success. Number one is to communicate. Whether that is through weekly dinner nights or game night, it's important to have family time and use this opportunity to not talk about academics or school. Second, put the phone to bed. It serves as a distraction and students need their sleep and rest. We will talk about ways you can monitor their phone use in the upcoming slides. Um, third, create a schedule and stick to it. Uh, we find that routine helps students thrive and provides a sense of structure. Monitor. If you go on to phonesheriff.com, you can monitor your students' social media accounts and filter their text messages. This allows you to block any sites you deem necessary, and this will also help you limit their phone use and distractions. Cell phone lockup will allow you to lock your phone for 60 minutes. This is great for homework and study times. You can set an alarm so that you can start using your phone once the alarm, um, the alarm goes off, and it's only $20 on eBay. So cyberbullying and the pressures through social media are currently at an all-time high. Through our advisory lessons, we have discussed with students the impacts of cyberbullying and how to use social media in a positive light versus negative. <clears throat> we have provided students with a hard paper copy of their 2019-2020 course schedule. All schedule changes need to be made directly on that form with the student and parent signature. No schedule changes will be accepted after May 24th or via email. We have different types of course levels. Research and honor courses are attached with a 0.5 bump, and you will typically find those levels within English and science courses. Science research courses include a research project, um, students participating in a DE course or dual enrollment course allow them to meet the requirements for high school while earning college credit upon successful completion of the course. Students receive a one point bump with DE classes. AP classes are also college level courses that provide students with a one point bump. Students will take an AP exam in May and if they receive a qualifying score on the AP exam, they can be considered for college credit. So some of the questions that we get that are rather common are, my child didn't bring home his course request, where can I see those? If you go to Parent View, there is a tab on the left side of your screen that indicates your student's course request for the upcoming year. And so just to reiterate, reiterate, any changes need to be submitted to the school counseling office no later than May the 24th. In addition, some of the questions we also get is, shouldn't I trust my children when it comes to the phone and the social media? 
It's a lot like driving. If you trust your daughter or your son's abilities on their own, how do you feel about the rest of the drivers on the road? So it's important to monitor that because you're not certainly aware of all of the things that may your child be inundated with on the internet and their social media. And once again, I want to reiterate, if you're looking for the cell phone jail, you can find that on eBay. Students must have a minimum of 140 hours of instruction, as well as pass the class in order to receive a credit. A verified credit is when a student passes the class, as well as passes the SOL that is attached to this class. Students are able to apply to college with both the standard and the advanced diploma. It is important to consider the classes that you take, not the diploma type that you receive. For the advanced diploma, students are required to have 26 credits. The standard diploma requires 22 credits. For both the advanced and the standard diploma, you, the students are required to have four credits of English. Students will take English all four years. Ninth and 10th grade students can either take academic or honors. 11th grade students are offered academic, honors, or AP language, and 12th grade students are offered either academic, AP English literature, or dual enrollment English. For the advanced diploma, you um, students are required to have four credits of science, four credits for social studies, and four credits of math. For the standard diploma, students need to have three credits for their science, their social studies, and their math. All right. Um, if your child is pursuing the advanced diploma, they will need to have either three years of one language or two years of one language and two years of another. So if they decided to do two years of one language, they could do French one, French two, and the other two years it could be French, or it could be American Sign Language one and American Sign Language two. If they are pursuing this standard diploma, no foreign language requirements um, are necessary. Okay, for both the advanced diploma and the standard diploma, um, students need to have two credits of health and PE, so that will be. Uh, met in their Health and PE 9 and Health and PE 10 course. All students are required to have and pass training in emergency first aid, CPR, and the use of the AED. This takes place during their ninth grade year. For both the Advanced Studies Diploma and the Standard Diploma, all students must take the Economics and Personal Finance course. Um, if a student is pursuing the Standard Diploma, they must earn a board-approved career and technical education credential to graduate, and this is known as the WISE test. Credits earned for the standard diploma shall include two consecutive credits in Fine Arts, Career and CTE, or World Language. For example, Art 1 followed by Art 2, Intro to Business and Marketing followed by Sports and Entertainment Marketing, or Spanish 1 followed by Spanish 2. Credits earned for the Advanced Studies Diploma shall include one credit in Fine or Performing Arts or career and technical education. Examples would be band, intro to cybersecurity, or art. A computer science credit earned by students may be considered a, a CTE course credit. The counseling team met with ninth and 10th grade students in reviewing teacher recommendations and electives for next year. Students should have brought home a course request form that reflects the teacher recommendations for math, science, English, history, language, and elective students 
chose for the upcoming 2019 and 2020 school year. Should students and parents wish to make any changes to the course reflected on the form, they must do the following. Indicate changes in designated areas. Student and parents sign the form. Parent must attach a letter if changing from an academic level course to a college level or honors course as instructed on the form. Again, please submit the form to the counseling office no later than, Mar uh, than May 24th. Change requests will not be accepted via email. Students need to set personal goals that will provide or give focus on their high school years. These goals are outlined in an academic and career plan developed with the assistance of a school counselor. The student's academic and career plan provides a strategy for accomplishing goals. While meeting with their counselors to select courses for the 2019-2020 school year, students begun and continued filling out their four-year plan. This provides a visual for students to help plan out which courses they would like to take each school year. Students should consider the following as they develop their plan and select courses. Students' abilities, interests, values, strengths, likes, and dislikes. Curriculum in the area of the student's choice, including work-related options cost, transportation, and extracurricular activities, possible occupations that relate to the student's skills. The LCPS Program of Studies is a wonderful resource to review the various levels of course offerings for each subject. When thinking about courses for the following year, take into consideration of the outside activities that your student participates in and the time commitment for each. We always encourage students to have a balanced schedule so they can be successful both in and out of school. Additional questions that we've had in the past regarding the most recent slides include, isn't my child required to take a virtual class? The answer is the state requires a virtual component. We've added this component to the required class of economics and personal finance. So your student will have met that requirement by the time we, they graduate with that class or those classes. And the additional question we also get is, when should I be looking at colleges and universities? The answer is, there's really not too early time. If your child is a ninth or 10th grader currently, they're welcome to start exploring. They're welcome to use our College and Career Center. We have a wonderful representative in there, Mrs. Barnes. She sends out newsletters and information regarding upcoming events. In addition, there is another college fair, the Northern Virginia Regional College Fair, that George Mason will be hosting on April 3rd from 6.30 to 8.30 with over 200 vendors, colleges and universities and other things that would be offered to students. If you have questions that you'd like to, for us to answer, and we haven't in this presentation, please email rockridgecounseling at gmail.com and we'll be happy to answer those questions. Our LCPS program of studies can be found using this. If you have additional questions regarding specific classes, you can go to the program of studies and it will provide you all of the information about what those course requirements and what materials it would cover. So this is the end of our presentation. Um, we will post this again so folks can watch it and we will have links to the video students saw on scheduling courses and um, picking classes for the upcoming school year. Again, if you have any questions, you can email us at the link we'll have provided in the video notes and the email address you saw in the presentation. So thank you all very much.